Greetings, fellow Whovians. Hope everyone had a good week so far. Well, today we're going to be looking at the final chapter of the East Space Trilogy with Warrior's Gate. So, here we go. The TARDIS and its crew of Dr. Romana, Adric, and K9, while traveling in East Space in the normal universe, end space, become trapped in a white null space between the universes. Elsewhere in the void, another spacecraft, run by Commander Rorvik, has also become trapped. Dun dun dun. The ship is a slave vessel. <sighs> Using members of the Leonine Theral race as their navigators. On becoming stuck, the current navigator of Byrock escapes the ship and makes his way to the TARDIS on the winds of time. Byrock warns the TARDIS crew of Rorvik's treachery before disappearing. Canine's memory wafers and uh, Canine's memory wafers are shredded by the winds of time living and functional but lacking long-term memories. Well, that's not good. The doctor leaves on his own to explore the null space, finding a large stone gateway. Beyond it is a large banquet hall, a large mirror on one of its walls, the corpses of several beings, and the husks of primitive robots strewn about. Oof. He discovers one of the robots is still functioning and asks it questions as he repairs it. The robots, called Gundans, Revolt by slaves and used to overthrow their masters in revolt. Hmm. I wonder if the Gundans are descendants of Gundams. Now that would be awesome. Meanwhile, Rorvik and his crew have discovered the TARDIS. Romana leaves to talk to them. Rorvik, believing Romana to be time sensitive like the Therals, dupes her into returning to their ship to examine their engines. When Romana does not return, Adric and K9 leave to recover her, but they get separated. Adric eventually makes it to the ship and hides aboard, while K9 reunites with the Doctor and aids it in repairing the Gundam. The Doctor's work is disrupted when Rorvik and several of his men arrive and hold the Doctor at gunpoint. While they stand off, another Gundam activates and walks through the seemingly solid mirror. Rorvik demands an explanation from the Doctor, revealing he has Romana captive, but the Doctor's only response is to walk through, through the mirror himself. Oh, the boy. Aboard the slaver ship, Romana is freed by another Thrall, Thrall named Laszlo, as she, as she hides in the hull of the ship. There, she encounters Adric. The two work out that the ship is made from a incredibly dense dwarf star alloy that can contain the Thralls. K9 arrives and informs the two of dimensional instability in the null space that she attributed to the alloy, causing the space to collapse in on itself. Romana rejoins Laszlo and takes her to the gateway and through the mirror while Adric remains aboard the slaver ship. On the other side of the mirror, the Doctor and Romana are reunited with Byrock in a stable, time-locked universe. Our offended Byrock explains that they were the slave masters, traveling on the winds of time in order to ravage other planets and subjugate their populations as slaves while the Gundam, until the Gundam revolt. The Doctor and Romana are returned to the Null Space and are immediately captured by Rorvik. Rorvik has come to realize that the Null Space is shrinking as the distances between the Gateway, the TARDIS, and Slaver Ship continue to decrease. Dun dun dun. Rorvik has ordered the crew to try to blast through the mirrors in the gateway, believing it to be the way out. But the mirrors resist all attack by their most powerful weapons. With the gateway and ship in visible distance of each other, Rorvik resorts to one last attempt to break the mirrors by using the exhaust of the ship's engine again engines against them. While the doctor warns that his actions will be doomed as the previous ones, Roman is able to regroup with, regroup with Lazo and Adric and together they free the remaining ferals on the slaver ship. Hooray! The TARDIS crew flee to the TARDIS as Warwick initiates his plan. The blast from the engines is reflected by the mirrors back onto the ship, destroying it and its crew. Aww. As the saved ferals pass through the mirror, Romana announces that she will be staying with them, having become empathetic to their plight. The doctor gives her canine, as passing through the mirror will restore his memory, but he will be unable to return. Um... Why? Therals, in exchange, provide the doctor with information on how to leave the void back to end space. Phew, wee. That was a lot of stuff going on there, huh? Anyway, let's look at some production notes here, shall we? Originally, the fifth episode of season 18 was sealed orders by novelist Christopher Priest before being abandoned. Stephen Gallagher, who had written a number of radio plays, was called upon for replacement, resulting in Warrior's Gate the third and a final story in the East Space Trilogy. Commissioned in March 1980, this was Gallagher's first script for Doctor Who and had the working title Dreamtime. 
The story was influenced by a radio serial he had done in 1979 called The Babylon Run, as well as the films of Jean Cocteau, such as Orpe, in which mirrors provide a gateway into another world. Nice. On completion in June, script editor Christopher H. Bedmead found the scripts to be overlong, as well as needing more work to keep them in line with other stories in the series. Therefore, he and director Paul Joyce reworked the story significantly, including rewriting much of the dialogue. Originally, the script is more comedic, with Rovick's crew being given a lot of humorous dialogue, two of the workers being played as a double act. Executive producer Barry Lutz, in particular, was against this, saying that it was turning the show into pantomime and saying that the crewmen must be played for real. As many of these lines were cut from the script, the few, the few remaining comedy lines were to be played straight as well. The scripts were finalized in late August 1980, but were then criticized by Lutz, who found them rather confusing. By this time, however, there was no more time to rework them further as Bidmi needed to begin work on the following story. Producer John Anthony Turner, too, found the story to be complicated, but had not gotten involved with the story during the scripting stages. Bidmi met with Gallagher with revised scripts, the latter being not too happy with the extensive changes. Warrior's Gate was significant in that it was the last story to feature companion Romana, played by Lala Ward, as well as long-running companion K-9. Ward had requested to leave earlier, being offered a part in another series, but Nathan Turner kept her to her contract. It was also during the making of this serial that Tom Baker let it be known that he would leave at the end of the series. Ward and Baker were in a relationship and had been for some time, but by now things were turning a chrominous between the two with many production personnel believing that they, were, that they were on the point of splitting up. It was with much surprise when they learned that just a few weeks later they had married. Aww. This story was also the last television story of the classic series to feature the character of K-9 Mark II, played by John Leeson. Leeson, who left at the end of series 16, returned for season 18 on the understanding that K-9 would be written out toward the end of the season. Aww. Joyce was keen to push the limits of the series by directing the serial like a film as he considered some of the earlier productions to be quite bland and workmanlike. This approach, however, caused problems early on with significant delays in order to achieve various shots such as the pan through the spaceship in the opening sequence. This included shooting the camera upwards where the gallery lights could be seen, known as shooting offset, something which is forbidden by the BBC. Such problems as this increased as the time as time began to run short, and he and producer, jo he and producer Nathan Turner clashed frequently, and even, and even executive producer Letts had to step in to, to advise Joyce. The letters being written to higher executives complaining of Joyce's style of work, also seen as inexperience, Joyce was asked to leave partway through production. His duties were taken up by assistant Graham Harper, who directed a number of scenes before, jo before finally Joyce was reinstated. Setting up of certain shots that Joyce had em envisioned proved to take up too much time and shooting overran an on a number of days. In the end, the serial was completed and it was indeed a departure in terms of style over the norm and was complimented by Bidmead, but Joyce was never to work on Doctor Who again. Background photographs utilized in many sequences were taken at Powell's Castle, Welsh Pool. Huh, well that's interesting. So overall, a pretty interesting end to the East Space Trilogy, and yeah, it was kind of sad that this was the final story featuring Romana and K-9, but of course, we would see K-9 again very soon, but not the Mark II version, so yeah. Well, anyway, so overall, I give Warrior Skate four song screwdrivers out of five. Well, join me next week as we take a look at the penultimate Tom Baker story, The Keeper of Trocken. So, until then, this is Hoovian Queen saying, Oh my giddy out! When I say run, run! I've a recipe that I do the neutron flow. Would you like a jelly baby? Fantastic! Alon Z! Geronimo! Bow ties are cool, fences are cool, and Stetsons are cool. <laughs>